You're looking at the biggest kick return man in college football, 6'4", 270 pound Prince Arthur Emerson with four kickoff returns for 48 yards. And he gets them because they're afraid to kick deep to Bryant or Kaufman. And the good deep kick right there, and Bryant will down it in the end zone. And as we move from Prince Arthur, a UCLA record 95-yard touchdown pass. As usually is the case, uh, this is a play that was very successful last week against BYU. And this is something that J.J. Stokes will pre-program. He'll say, I ran slant routes last week. This week, I know Reggie Reeser, number four, who's covering me, is going to try and take it away. And this is the longest UCLA reception in history, 95 yards. That broke a 60-year-old record. And uh, last year, Stokes had a 90-yard touchdown reception. He's averaging over 23 yards per touchdown reception this year, and that'll make it even bigger. And on first and 10, first play of the second quarter, Robert Gamble, a senior from Overland Park, Kansas, was there to make the stick and break up the pass intended for Bjornsson. And Robert Gamble, the senior, as you said, plays this as an experienced corner would. He reads the pattern. He read the drop of the quarterback. When he saw Damon Hewitt took a three-step drop, he knew that the receiver was going to hitch in front of him, and that's what gave him the ability to drive. Now, you're Washington. You're saying, let's try a three-step. Let's pump fake, and let's go deep on Robert Gamble. That was Bornson, the backup quarterback, who's playing wide receiver today on second and 10 from the 20. Right up the middle and nothing there for Pete O'Brien. And this is a fired up Bruins defense as we go to New York and John Saunders. Roger, Florida State facing Virginia this afternoon. Charlie Ward flies to Merrick Van Over. And then it's just speed to the end zone. 86 yards, Florida State number one. Virginia still unbeaten as of yet. 7-0, Roger. Hey, John, that was long, but not as long as the one we just had here. Not for Mr. J.J. Stokes, who is emerging as the best wide receiver in UCLA history, and there's been a bunch of good ones here. Third down and seven, 23-yard line. Hill and Kralik, the wide receivers. Ewer throws the near side. Conwell, the intended receiver. Washington is yelling, how about a flag? Gamble there on the coverage. Guy from the hometown right down the street from where I live, Overland Park, Kansas. Attended Rockhurst High School there, a veteran cornerback as Damon Heward. Now you can tell the momentum, the intensity of that UCLA defense that time. They stepped it up a notch. Back to punt, John Wardell inside the 10 at the seven yard line. Gidry back to return for UCLA. And what a turnaround, one big play can make. And Gidry try to find a wall to the outside. Gidry inside the 40 to the 36-yard line, and UCLA with their best field position of the day. Richard Thomas was over there to make the tackle for the Huskies of Washington. Gamble came up with two very big plays on that last series of downs for the UCLA defense. He's a senior. He didn't get the start today, but he does see a lot of playing time and he's only one of the two seniors in that secondary for UCLA but that series belonged to him and as a result of that uh, UCLA enjoys their best field position of the afternoon they've got it first and 10 37 yard line the Bruins have rushed for 846 yards in their last three games but they're hurting a tailback and Cook will go to the air the intended receiver Kevin Jordan and it's overthrown the coverage by Reggie Reeser, the man that was burned there by J.J. Stokes, as we take a look at the first quarter statistics. Well, on the strength of that uh, touchdown pass, the very last play of the first quarter, the total yards look pretty even. 153 for Washington, 125 turnovers are even, and the time of possession is very close as Washington has a 15-7 lead. Second and 10 from the 37. Both receivers split to the near side as Cook will check off at the line of scrimmage, and that'll split his backs, Milliner and Hicks. On the delay, watch this young man, the true freshman, Skip Hicks. He's been bothered by an ankle injury. Lawyer Malloy will come up to make the tackle, but Hicks had the huge game against Nebraska uh, before having to leave at the beginning of the fourth quarter, had rushed for over 140 yards in that game. And I don't know whose foul up that was, Hicks or the quarterback, but it seemed like the exchange, the mesh point where the handoff occurs, was uh, not as smooth as I'm sure the UCLA offense would like it. 
third down and six from the 33-yard line. Out of the shotgun. The blitz. Stokes has got it. He's trying to get to the first down markers, and Josh Moore was over there. I'll tell you what, Moore from Torrance, California, must have done some uh, calf roping in his days because he got him right up there around the head and That's just right. turned him straight down. One of the things Stokes does so well, though, particularly around the end zone, he did it last week against BYU on one of his three touchdown receptions, is when he sees a first down marker or the touchdown uh, end zone line, he's able to extend those long arms and get the first down. But as you said, Moore wrestled him to the ground, and it looks to me like the Bruins are going to go for it on fourth down. Why not? Trailing by eight, 12.32 to go first half. On the left side, Hicks spins, doesn't get it. Stood up, Lawyer Malloy, the first man to him, number nine, the redshirt freshman from Tacoma. And Hicks maybe got it a little bit too far outside that time. Watch this play as Hicks gets the ball. Now he's got some room right here, but out of nowhere comes number nine, Lawyer Malloy. Hicks never saw him because he was behind the offense and defensive line. Malloy came through, filled the hole beautifully, and as a result of that, the Huskies take yeah. over the football. I'll tell you, John, I still like the call, though. Early in the game, you sure. know, you've got a little momentum back. Go ahead and go for it. Your defense is fired up now. The difficult thing is Hicks hasn't played for a number of weeks. That's right. And on a short yardage situation, he may have been a little bit more adept at just getting the ball and getting to that first down marker. It looked like he was a little hesitant getting through the hole. Kralik's in motion. First and 10, 29-yard line for the Huskies. As Napoleon Kaufman tries the right side, and not much there as Jameer Miller, 95, came over to make the stop in this uh, the University of Washington defense we're looking at right now. Ninth in total defense, fourth in rushing defense, and 17th in scoring defense. And the UCLA Bruins also very strong defensively this year. And those are national rankings, and they are playing very good defensive football. It's an aggressive defensive front and an uh, aggressive scheme that Jim Lambright employs. Second down and seven from the 32. Hewitt checks off at the line of scrimmage, and Pitches it to Kaufman. Kaufman's got some room to the outside, and he's driven out of bounds. The man over there, Teddy Lawrence, number two. And, John, we've seen Hewer check off a couple of times today, and it seems like every time he does, they go to the option. Well, you should be able to option when you have a, a player of Kaufman's ability who can get to the outside and has world-class speed. Uh, we're looking right there at Napoleon Kaufman, uh, and there's no question that when he gets the football, a lot of exciting things can happen as he's off to a very good start so far in today's game. These two teams have played uh, awfully close through the years. The last three games have been decided by 11 points. UCLA has won three of the last four on first and 10. The pass to the far side to Ron Hill is gathered up by three players over there, including Travis Collier, number 10, and Robert Gamble. And want to remind you, Monday night on ABC Sports, uh, the Los Angeles Raiders are back in the hunt in the AFC West, and they'll go to the Mile High City to take on their arch rival, the Denver Broncos and John Elway. That all begins at 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain on ABC's Monday Night Football, and we ran into an old Raider at dinner the other night. That's right, Bob Chandler bumped into us at dinner. He does radio for the Raiders and told us Hostel will be back starting again this week up there in Mile High Stadium. Always a good game, AFC West matchup. Second and six, 48-yard line. Second man through the handoff, and very close to the first down. Thomas was the ball carrier, sophomore Richard Thomas from uh, Kent, Washington. They don't, uh, John, the Huskies use their fullback much in their offense. Uh, between uh, Thomas and Jones, uh, not even 30 carries between them this year coming into the game. No, that's right. They're basically blockers. And when you have people of the ability of Kaufman and Bryant, you have to. How about Thomas, though? A couple weeks ago, he got a Gets start. State, yeah, yeah, his wife had a baby got, in the game. Got uh, his first touchdown. Got his first touchdown. That's a lot to happen <laughs> in one day. day. And what did the coaches tell us? They said he's spending a lot more time in film study. Yeah, now. absolutely. It's because his baby's yeah. keeping him awake, but uh, he's yeah. a very happy young man. And less time in diaper study. <laughs> First and 10, 47-yard line for the Huskies. Napoleon Kaufman trying to find some room. Gets about four yards. Coming up for the tackle, Marvin Goodwin, the strong safety. Marvin's a guy that's played free safety before, has uh, been moved over to strong safety. 31 tackles uh, on the year. A couple of fumble recoveries, two interceptions. This is a good, aggressive, strong secondary for UCLA between Greenwood and Goodwin, Teddy Lawrence. And then their backups. You know, you got guys like Donovan Gallatin, Robert Gamble. 
They've always been a strong team, especially in the secondary. I mean, UCLA cranks out the years, yeah. great players Kenny in the Easley. NFL year in and year out from that safety position. Second and six. The handoff to Pino Bryant. And Bryant with some room to the outside. He's got the first down. Bryant inside the 35 to the 32-yard line. So Bino Bryant, the senior from here in Los Angeles, 11 yards on the pickup. And Donnie Edwards made the tackle. And this has been a tough year for him as... Well, Bino Bryant is a very gifted running back. Watch Joe Kralik. You see him on the right side, number nine. In order for a player to bounce a football outside, watch how long he has to stay on his block. Doesn't have to be very physical, but in order for running backs to get first downs and to make big runs, those wide receivers have to stay on their blocks, and they have to do it an awfully long time. I was going to mention this has been tough for him this year because Napoleon Kaufman has sort of moved to the forefront in the running back position. As on the first down, right up the middle, Matt Jones with the carry. Not much given right there. 9.33 left to go first half. Uh, it was all Washington in the first quarter until a penalty on the what appeared to be the final play of the first quarter. And they didn't end the first quarter on the penalty. So consequently, one more play for UCLA and they went 95 yards through the air as the rushing yards so far today, Washington 100 and UCLA just 14. I tell you what, you look at that UCLA defense, do you see a lot of guys with hands on their hips. That means uh, they're a little bit winded. I think Washington's been pounding them so far today. They've been on the football field a while. Second and eight. Hewitt on the straight drop back. We'll go right up the middle now. And Damon Hewitt puts his nose down, gets to the 25-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. In Kosey Littleton, 54, and Donnie Edwards, 23, there on the tackle. And that'll bring up a third down situation. So far this year, Washington just 36% on third down situations. As this UCLA defense is giving you the John Spagnola hand on hips <laughs> drill. You were tired. There's Bob Field, the defensive coordinator. You were tired. You know that because you were tired a lot as a player. I can recognize the tired you can, out you, there, can, yeah. you can recognize fatigue Thanks in any way. Third down and three. Ninth play of this drive from the 25 yard line. Hewitt on the rollout. On the run. Overthrown. He had two receivers, yeah, John, in the same area over there. Was that a, a, a miscue or just one guy deep coming back to the ball? Not really. The timing of the pattern, I believe Hewitt wanted to get rid of the ball. The play was designed to throw the ball sooner than he did. And by the time the receivers uh, make their patterns, make their routes, see right now it's actually an out and up by uh, number nine. It looks like Kralik over there. And I think he may have gotten into the territory of number three, Theron Hill. It looked to me like Hewitt wanted to go to Theron Hill all the way and maybe Kralik was thinking he'd get open on his own. 42-yarder for Travis Hansen, who is 0 for 4 from outside of 40 yards this year, 5 of 10 on the year. Bjornsson to hold. It's got the distance, and it's good. So for the first time this year, Travis Hansen hits one from outside of 40 yards, a 42-yarder, and Washington leads it 18 to 7. gets it to the 18. The Bruins have scored 10 touchdowns now this year that have covered 30 yards or more, including two by the defense. As I want to remind you, it's time once again for our Coors Light Fan Picks College Football Poll. Just call 1-800-932-3000 to vote. This week, Florida State remains on top, so if you want to cast your ballot, there's an 800 number for you to call. First and 10, 18-yard line, Jim Lambright, who is minus a coach this week, uh, Miles Corrigan, one of his assistant coaches, uh, resting now comfortably in a Bay Area hospital after undergoing heart surgery last week. And we wish him a speedy recovery. As Cook will throw it to Jordan near side. Nice move by Jordan to remove one tackle as he gets to the 25-yard line. Gain of seven there. Russell Hairston uh, makes a tackle. So in essence, uh, Washington is really down two coaches because Lambright being named John head coach, you know, early in this season, He's playing as, he's serving as defensive coordinator. That's right, it's a quick hitch. Just get the ball out in the flat. What I like about Cook is he sets his feet quickly, he opens up his hit, and he has a very strong arm as he gets the ball out to Kevin Jordan on the sidelines. But you're right, Lambright is down to the bare bones staff right now with his uh, football coaching staff. Cook, six of nine, 125 yards, the handoff up the middle. And 
not much going right there for Skip Hicks, who's playing on a very tender ankle. Hicks is a 6'1", 205-pound freshman from Wichita Falls, Texas. And one of the things UCLA has done awfully well today, or this year, is rush the football. You see over five yards of carry, but today, just 1.3 yards per carry. And that's the DJ. That is uh, Don James, the former head coach at Washington. All the players with that sticker on their helmets to uh, remember their former head coach on a third down and two. Cook, the quick hitter to Stokes. And across the 35 to the 38-yard line, Reggie Reeser and Kilpatrick came up to make the tackle. 13 yards on the reception. Stokes fifth in the nation in scoring. There's no difference than a college uh, basketball player going for a rebound. See how Stokes gets good body position. He just walls the ball away for Reggie Reeser. As a matter of fact, Reeser wasn't even sure he had caught the football because he couldn't see the football in the air right there. He's 6'4", 215 pounds. San Diego State recruited him, wanted to make him a tight end. He said, I'm a wide receiver. <laughs> And he showed them a couple of weeks ago. First and 10, 39-yard line. Cook on the rollout. has got Stokes open. He tries that move again. A little bit successful. He's able to get an extra yard or two. Josh Moore and Kilpatrick come up to make the tackle on J.J. Stokes, who has been on some kind of run. Going back to last year, including today's game, 13 touchdown receptions over his last eight games. And with nine touchdown catches this year, as John mentioned, Sean LaChapelle with the season record, 11 touchdown catches. So conceivably, he could go past that today as Ricky Davis is checked back in. Cooks in his last four on second and one. They'll give it to Milliner, the first man through. And that's going to be very close right there to the first down. Milliner has sort of been the forgotten man in the backfield early in the year. He was recruited as a tailback but moved to fullback. Finally, with all the injuries, got his chance and has had consecutive 100 yards rushing games. But keep in mind, as we're both against Western Athletic Conference teams, I mean, uh, if he played in the WAC, I guess he'd be all WAC as a, as a running back. But uh, it's a much tougher Husky defense that UCLA has faced so far today. Stokes, who doesn't even need to go in the huddle, just comes to the near side. On third down and one, UCLA two of six in third down situations with 5.08 to go, first half. Downfield, the intended receiver, the tight end, Brian Allen, and Cook took a pretty good shot after releasing the football. Cook took a pretty good hit right there from Steve Springstead. He did. There's a fake toss action. It's designed to get the football downfield, but I'll tell you, J.J. Stokes was wide open, standing on the sideline as Hewitt takes a hit. It looked like he could have he could have takes a hit from yeah. Springstead. It looked like he could have run for it, too, John, if he was uh, so inclined. Yeah, that was a tough pass to throw. He had to feather it in there. Shager back at the 31-yard line to punt it. Bino Bryant nearing the 1,000-yard mark in career return yardage. To bring it back, left-footed punter sends a nice spiral down. Bryant, the fair catch inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. So UCLA has Washington backed up after the 44-yard punt by Darren Shager. probably played more courses than uh, Spagnola's played recently. I can tell you that from the looks of his golf swing. You call it play, you're being <laughs> generous. First and ten from the nine-yard line of the uh, Huskies is Napoleon Conklin tries the right side and gets about three yards. Damon Hewer, the young quarterback, we talked to him about the adversity of this season for Washington. This team has been through so much. I mean, you could probably write a book on what we've gone through this season uh, as far as Coach James stepping down, uh, the probation sentence. Uh, Coach Corgan got hurt last uh, last week, and then with uh, Jason Shelley. I mean, this team has been through so much, and, and to, to play like we are at a championship level, I think it says something special about this team. You know, we're not pulling up our tents and going home. We're playing football on Saturdays. Damon Hewitt started 4 of 5 for 76 yards. Since then, he is 2 of 7 for 18 yards. On a second and 6, he'll hand it to Kaufman. And Kaufman's got nothing going on the left side. Jameer Miller, 95, was the man that flipped him up as George Case and Matt Werner are out front. Some good penetration to set up the tackle by Miller. Well, you know, just relating back to Hewitt's comments, I mean, I have to agree with him that definitely, you know, this Husky team is a very proud team. They've been the three Rose Bowls. They've won a national championship. And when you know you're playing for nothing, I mean, 
I, I just admire the way they've been able to hang together, to able to win a game last week in the last couple of seconds, and, and they are on a mission to try and knock off every Pac-10 team they can this year. Third down and six from the 13-yard line. Washington just two of seven in third down situations, and Kaufman, who has two fumbles today, had a pass right in his hands and a lot of green grass in front of him, and he dropped the football. Kaufman came into this game with just 11 receptions coming out of the backfield. And so a good opportunity there for Washington to move out of a hole. But that'll bring up a punting situation for John Wardell, the senior from Bakersfield, California. There are 26 players on the Washington roster from the state of California. Gidry back deep at midfield to receive the punt on fourth and six. And a fair catch call by Gidry at the 47-yard line. 3.24 to go first half. The Huskies lead the Bruins 18-7. Ten forty-seven yard line for the Bruins of UCLA. Ricky Davis and James Milliner in the backfield with 3.24 to go first half. Washington showing blitz from the outside. Cook with plenty of time down the middle. Got his tight end, Brian Allen. And that's enough for the first down inside the 35-yard line. They'll come back and actually mark it at the 36. 11 yards on the pickup. Allen, the senior from Valencia. Good protection by uh, the UCLA offensive line. He's played pretty well in the pass protection so far today. Cook is able to look all over the field, and his tight end settles in the zone. Brian Allen gets his knee on the ground, and that's why the ball was brought back to that spot. That still was enough for a first down. Allen missed the uh, first couple of games this year because of a knee injury. Came back against Stanford. That's just his sixth reception of the year, and they really missed him early on. First and 10, 35-yard line. Cook going quickly to the outside. And the re reception made by Kevin Jordan, the sophomore from Beltsville, Maryland. Lewis Jones, number one, was there on the tackle. Just another hitch pattern. Good protection up front again. And Jordan is just going to take advantage of the fact that uh, number one, Lewis Jones, can't get to the flat as quickly as he'd like. Jordan is also a tall target and a good receiver. is really emerging this year into a fine wide receiver. He's a good blocker downfield as well. Block running, second and five. Hand off up the middle, Ricky Davis. Davis inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Russell Harrison makes the tackle. And 12 yards on the pickup, that's the best run from scrimmage today for UCLA. It is, and that means the offensive line's getting going. Vaughn Parker on the right side, Matt sinks it, opening up a pretty nice hole there, and Davis is able to take advantage of it. Ricky Davis, 5'8 and a half, 192 pounds, has seen limited action the last two years. As you take a look at Parker, 68, sinks in 73. On first and 10 from the 18-yard line, UCLA driving. As we near the two-minute mark, first half. Cook, Stokes. Oh. Touchdown, UCLA! I'll tell you what, folks. You can't ask for a better executed pass play right down the middle of a defense. Watch Stokes. We talk about body positioning and footwork. He's able to elude the defender on the bump and run cover. Watch him lay out for this football. I mean, that's as far as he can humanly stretch, and he's able not only to get his fingers on it, but pull it in for the touchdown reception. That's big time, isn't it, John? It certainly that's is. That's NFL time. And you have to credit Cook with a perfectly thrown pass as well. Merton to attempt the point after. 18 yards on that touchdown pass matches Stokes' number, and that gives him 10 on the year. Point after is good, and with 158 left to go, first half, Washington leads UCLA now by the score of 18 to 14, and it's been the Wayne Cook, J.J. Stokes show. Just that little play action passes enough. Well, the, actually, the linebackers are on a blitz, so it's no matter about the linebacker coverage. And you can see how Cook, off the play action, was able to lay the ball up in the air. Nobody could get that football but J.J. Stokes, and that's the kind of pass you want to throw in that situation. And Terry Dunahue has got to be absolutely pleased about the execution of that particular drive by the Bruins offense. 
Well, you saw Donahue in his 18th season, and uh, he told us the other day what an important game this was for him. To give them a barometer on the rest of the year, and we want to remind you coming up at halftime, the Prudential Halftime Report with John Saunders scores and highlights, but Donahue felt that the Nebraska game was maybe the only game he's ever been in a losing situation which something positive came out of, and Rick Neuheisel, his assistant, felt the same way. To take that, to go ahead and win a close game against Stanford and then hammer San Diego State and BYU. Now they come in against the team that's been to the Rose Bowl the last three years, can't go. Washington looks at this game as their Rose Bowl this year. And this is a huge test for UCLA. And the kickoff deep and Coughlin will down it and Washington will have it at the 20. And that means Prince Arthur Emerson doesn't get a yeah, chance to return gosh. to football. And He's become a local folk hero, <laughs> at least at least with us, anyway. But you're right, the crowd's now into the game, and the way UCLA started out today, you had to wonder if they were emerging as a good football team. But uh, now they're right back in this football game, trailing only by four points. Stokes has got 10 touchdown receptions in his last eight quarters of football. That's pretty good average, huh? Yeah, that is just a track <laughs> meet right there for him. First and 10, 20-yard line. Three wide receivers for Washington. As they'll swing it to Kaufman. Anything there? Nothing doing. He's stuck right at the 20. But John, I like the idea of them immediately going back to him after dropping the ball in a similar play. Well, you've got to keep the confidence level high of your big play personnel. And, and certainly Kaufman is capable of making big plays. But Donnie Edwards made a, a real nice play out in the flat, waited for people to help, kept his uh, positioning defensively. Washington, all three timeouts. The blitz. Got him! Jameer Miller. Seven yards on the loss as the leading sack man for UCLA does his thing. One thing Bob Field, the defensive coordinator, told me yesterday is that there's no real star of this defense, but I'd say here's one guy who's stepping up to become a star. See, the nice thing about our defense is we all play well together, and every player takes it upon himself to make the turnover, the fumble recovery. Six tackle today for Miller. Let's watch Jameer Miller, number 95, as he just breaks right up the middle. They move him around a little bit now to take advantage of the fact that he is such a good pass rusher. And he got that strong hand on Damon Ward, and uh, all of a sudden, it's third and long. Well, the sack man has come through again. He's got now 20 and a half on his career, as the Bruins had 21 coming into the game. You know, I was, I was curious in asking you, John, uh, the uh, UCLA pass defense, if you look at statistics, seems a little suspect. The opponents have gotten 70 passing first downs this year on a 63% completion ratio. Is that, is that an accurate number or an accurate reflection of what's going on? Well, the percentage ratio is high, but they've also picked off the number of passes this year. I mean, 10 so far this season. So, I mean, when you look at that and you combine that, I'd rather give up the percentage give up maybe the swing passes to Kaufman and that sort of thing which we've seen today yeah. but when you have the opportunity to catch a ball and intercept it downfield they've certainly been uh, taking advantage of that as well but you would call them a big play defense that's right with the yeah. sacks and the interceptions that's exactly right third and 15 as Washington with two timeouts left trying to generate something here at the end of the first half and Hewitt nowhere and he is smashed he was smashed by George Case 59 and Jameer Miller 95 Tell you one thing you didn't want to do, and that was turn the football over, though. Watch the hit. This is a quarterback in the open field, and everybody Ooh. picks him for different. I mean, that is just what defensive players live for, a vulnerable quarterback in the open field. And UCLA is going to have some time left on the clock when they uh, get possession of the football. UCLA's got an injured man over in that uh, huddle, one of their players on his feet but leaning over. Good decision by Heward, though. He didn't want to force the football. He's up by four. He can go into halftime. He's going to let his defense get on the field and play defense and hopefully uh, preserve that lead. Got a timeout now with 1.15 left to go. Washington leads UCLA 18 to 14. Tuesday. I'm pregnant. on the scoreboard as they've got two timeouts remaining and one minute and eight seconds left to go in the first half 
31-yard punt by Wardell, so they'll have good field position. Washington, John, is trying to be the spoiler this year. They uh, knocked off Stanford in the opening game of the year. Cal was unbeaten last week, knocked them off. UCLA, they've got roses in the back of their mind. Uh, the only thing is, Washington doesn't play Arizona this year, so they can't get in their way. That's right, and Arizona is the only undefeated team mm -hmm. in the Pac-10 right now. I'm sure they like to get their hands on them. But as I said, I just you know, I, I very much admire the way they've been able to stay together as a football team under what I think is very adverse circumstances. First and ten, let's call it the 49-yard line. Washington showing blitz. Cook out of the shotgun will come to Stokes, and he makes the catch very close to the first down at the 41-yard line. He is just such a big target, John. <laughs> And comes back to the football, can catch it high, can catch That's it low. Right. And you see a lot of times tall receivers have difficulty with the low reception, but he's able to get the pads down on the ground and secure the catch. Right at a minute, they're gonna uh, they're gonna now bring the chains out. They want to see if uh, if it is indeed a first down. So that's an official's timeout with uh, one minute left to go, first half, and UCLA trailing 18 to 14. We mentioned Washington will not play Arizona. They don't play him again until 1995. And this, of course, the first meeting between UCLA and Washington since 1990. Injuries have uh, been a problem. You can see that's going to come up just short. Yes, it is. Well, seven of the last eight games have been decided by seven points or less. And uh, the... Uh, the history of this series has been very close. As I mentioned earlier, UCLA is the only team that uh, Don James didn't have a winning uh, percentage against in his uh, illustrious career as head coach uh, of the Huskies. In a conference like the Pac-10, you'll always have one team that's a nemesis of another team, and UCLA has been a nemesis to, to the Huskies over the years. Second and one, less than one, second and inches. Cooks at eight of his last nine. I think on this short yardage, they might uh, try to go deep on this play, Jeff? It's not a bad down to try it, Roger. You'll we'll see if Homer Smith is going to try that. These three receivers to the right side. Oh, we'll hand it off. Milliner, and he gets very close to the first down, depending on the spot. Reggie Reeser and Andy Mason, number 13, uh, came up and did a good job there. That didn't fool anybody, and now it's using some of the clock as it's coming down to 35. UCLA with the two timeouts. While the officials decided whether or not to measure, the clock kept running. Now they've got a third down in less than a yard, and they're going to throw it as Cook goes down the middle, and intercepted by Mason. Intercepted by Mason. Allen had it in his hands, and Andy Mason comes up with the interception, and UCLA got a little bit cute with a running play, didn't get the first down, didn't stop the clock to get organized, and now, with 17 seconds to go, Washington has the ball. Watch Brian Allen, number 86, come across. It is a safe pass to the tight end in the middle of the field. It would have been a first down, but it hits off of Brian Allen's pads, and Andy Mason is there to make the interception for the Huskies. Now, that, what, yeah, that, that's a pass that uh, Brian Allen should have caught. I mean, I'm sure that he's very upset with the fact that he just didn't lock that pass up and not allow the thing to hit into his shoulder pads like that because those pads are hard. They're made of fiberglass, and the ball just ricochets right off them and into the hands of Andy Mason. Two timeouts left for Washington. First and 10, 43-yard line. Gives them a chance to maybe get at least three as they'll swing it out on the screen to Kaufman and a great job by the UCLA defense. Is complete to Napoleon. Coming up to... Make the tackle for UCLA was Tommy Bennett, number eight. And they just did a terrific job of stringing out that screen pass as Washington has taken a timeout now with seven seconds left to go. This UCLA defense, John, has really picked it up here in the uh, the second quarter. They have, and it's so often the case that defense will set the tempo for the football game. I mean, the defensive front is very active for UCLA. I like the call by Hewitt. I like the call by uh, Lambright in this situation. Uh, you get the ball in a guy like Kaufman's hands on a screen pass. If he can break a tackle or two, he can get you good field position to make something happen, and you're not risking a, a pivotal turnover at this point of the, of, the first, of the first half. Never a bad call when you get it to Napoleon Kaufman's hands, huh? <laughs> Isn't it somehow coaches uh, become a lot smarter when they have players like Kaufman around? There's Donovan Gallatin. He's a, a backup, but uh, I'll tell you his number, 16 tackles, a couple of sacks, a, a fumble recovery, two interceptions, a forced fumble, and the uh, Washington huddle over there. Now, with seven seconds uh, left to go, they've got uh, one timeout left. Sure. Uh, conceivable to try to 
maybe try to get about a 20, 25-yard pickup, use about five seconds, or would he just go deep this time? I think he just goes deep. They have to get the ball beyond, let's say, around the 25-yard line. So you're talking about a pass in excess of 25 yards, actually about 29, 30 yards. So uh, there's no reason not to take a shot, at least down the middle of the field, and use the timeout and set up your field goal kicker. Trips to the near side on second and seven. Heward is going to go deep looking for Bjornsson. And it's out of bounds, and time expires in the first half. So much for all that evaluation. Yeah. <laughs> Throw the ball out of bounds, and halftime's upon it. Very interesting first half of football here as Washington leads UCLA 18-14. College football on ABC Sports, brought to you by American Honda, who has been making quality cars in America for the past 10 years. And Coors Light, aged ice cold for that pure taste of the Rockies. Reach for the silver bullet, the right beer now. We'll be back with halftime activities after this message and a word from our ABC stations.